Hello, my name is Imran Buddha, and I'm with Imagine Technologies, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use AnyCAD with an Inventor 2016. So AnyCAD was added uh, within uh, 2016 as a new feature, and it kind of helps you, you know, import, um, you know, multiple files such as like, you know, if you've got a SolidWorks file or a Contia file. The reason why um, they've actually added that in there is because most companies today, I mean, they're not just using one, you know, format. I mean, I could be using Inventor, but my sister company could be using Katia or even SolidWorks, right? So there kind of has to be a way to, you know, work together and, you know, figure out, you know, if somebody updates a file, you know, do I need to rebuild my constraints or, you know, make my files update and so forth. So with AnyCAD, what this allows us to do is, you know, kind of allows us to create a reference, you know, with the different CAD files without creating a conversion of that file, right? So technically, if changes do happen later down, um, you know, within our design, you know, if I'm using Inventor and someone else is using another program, you know, we're able to kind of work together and I'm able to see those changes within Inventor. Uh, so some of the formats that... Uh, Inventor actually uses here now is, you know, you can see from the help, you know, you've got Alias, Katia V4, V5, you got Creo, IGIS, and so forth. Now, if we take a look at some of the associative options here, uh, we've got, again, Katia V5, um, you know, we're getting into PTC, SolidWorks, uh, you know, Siemens, uh, Rhino, and so forth. So, I mean, what does this all mean when we're working with an inventor? So, for example, here, you know, if we start off with the top-down design, I'm going to work within the assembly. So here I'm going to start off within the assembly file, and I'm going to go to Place. So when I click on the pull-down, notice here there's a new option that's called Place Imported CAD Files, right? So I can either click on that, or I can simply click on Place, and I can navigate through whichever files that I want from down here. Uh, so if I hit Cancel there, and I'll go back into Place Imported Files, and I've got a design here on my desktop. So here I've got a spark plug. So here if I go into spark plug, and I'm going to load the sparkplug.cat product, which is a Katia assembly here. And remember how before you could go into options and you know change you know what you wanted to bring in if you wanted to create a composite or you know if you wanted to convert it into a single part. Those options have changed now. So if you click on open, it brings you into this. Um, import dialog box here, but we've got two different options. So notice here, uh, what we were used to before was the convert. So you'd click on convert and you could specify, you know, do I want to bring this in as an assembly, you know, multi-body or a composite, or if we wanted to bring them in as individual parts, um, you know, do I want to bring them in as surfaces and so forth. But what's, what's kind of handy here is this reference model, right? So with this reference model, what's going to happen is if I make changes to that Katia assembly, and yes, I did say assembly, right? All the parts essentially will modify, right? If I've got constraints that are linked uh, within my part, they're going to automatically modify as well. So for instance here, if I go to the new select tab here and I click on load model, this shows me directly on the screen, you know, what I'm going to be able to see. Um, I do have an option here that says link visibility. I can turn on and turn off different objects from here. So notice, you know, if I click on the, um, the plus, which changes it to a minus, that's going to remove it. If I click on it again, it simply comes back. So here when I click OK, you quickly saw that it was doing the conversion there. So here when I click, I'm going to place it within the assembly. Notice my model browser looks a little bit different here as well. If I expand the spark plug, notice here I've got some, you know, multiple options. But again, these aren't inventor parts. This is not an inventor subassembly that got created. Um, if I right click on my spark plug here, I can say I want to edit the import, right? And this brings me directly back into my dialog box here. So let's just say I want to get rid of the wire tip um, and we'll get rid of, uh, we'll get rid of the bottom component and we'll get part of the body. So we can want to see the electrode on the inside. So here if I go ahead and click OK, notice everything updates, right? You know, if I wanted to change that again, I can simply right click and say, I want to edit the import and I can turn everything on again, right? So that's another way of including and excluding some components. Now within the assembly, I mean, I still have the options of turning off the visibility here, but notice what happens here. It's going to come up saying that the components are associative set by a specific design of view, and I can remove the associativity if I click OK, right? So you still have those options that you can change underneath in here, underneath a, a different view wrap. 
But let's just say uh, we were going to create an actual, um, let's just say we're going to create a, a, a spark plug holder, right? So what we want to do is if we take a look at it from a side view like this, let's just say we want to reference some of these edges here. So here I'm going to go to create and I'm going to create a spark plug holder and I'll create it as a part and I'm going to change this, put it into my desktop and I've got my spark plug folder here and I'm just going to create a spark plug file right there and I'll hit yes. I'll hit open and I'll just select this top face here. So again, I'm working within um, a part file now and I'm going to create a new sketch and I'll just rotate the model around and we'll just pick the XY plane here. Now, when I click on the pull down and I'm going to select project geometry, I'm going to select these edges here and we'll create a profile and we'll come out 0.5, we'll come down 0.5 and do the same thing over here, 0.5 and down 0.5. We'll close out the profile and we'll close out these two edges here. So now when I finish my sketch, um, if we look back in their sketch, notice here we have two references, right? So it's working exactly as if I'm working with, you know, inventor files, right? I mean, I still haven't converted it into an inventor file, but it's able and it's, it's allowing me to select those edges as references. So now if I extrude this profile, and let's just say, I say, I want to extrude it to this face, right? Um, I'll go ahead and click OK, and it, it creates my extrusion here. So now when I hit return, and I'll go back to my assembly, notice here, it automatically comes up with some references. Uh, so here I can see my actual model. So if I go ahead and hit save, I'm just going to save this assembly, and I'm going to go into my desktop, and I'll just type in spark plug assembly. And we'll go ahead and save this file. So I'm just going to go ahead and click OK here, and it's going to save my assembly. But now we're going to actually change, um, you know, part of the CATIA file here. So we're just going to simulate a change. So if we take a look at the the body over here, right? So what we're going to notice is this component here is going to actually move up. So what we're going to do is we're going to simulate that change. So I'm going to here I'm going to go to my desktop. I'm going to go into my spark plug folder. And I already have over here a, a part called body, and I've got a, a part that's called body updated. So here I'm just going to delete this. So normally, again, you wouldn't do this. Um, so this is kind of behind the scenes. <laughs> and I'm going to change this back to, you know, the new file that has the updates in it. And let's go into Inventor. So a couple things that we'll notice here, you know, we do see that lightning bolt. So again, that lightning bolt means that change has happened within our model. So if I go ahead and click on the lightning bolt, notice here we can see that our body is actually updated, right? It didn't affect my assembly. I still have an adaptive component, right? So if, you know, change or design happens, right, I'm able to, to make those changes. Um, I have tested out um, as well, you know, with the constraints because, um, you know, just thinking about what happens with an assembly, right? Uh, a design can change and also constraints are going to change as well. So I have played around with, you know, another CATIA file. Um, I just don't have that on my machine anymore. Um, but, I mean, you do have the ability of constraints actually change or, you know, if I do an offset of a constraint, you know, it will update the model as well. So you do have that references. So again, hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, you know, take care.